In this video on developing web applications with ASP.NET Web Forms 4.5, I'd like to start looking at how to implement the repository pattern in the solution we have been developing throughout the video series. The repository pattern is a pr programming practice in which we abstract away the code that is responsible for handling and manipulating the entity classes of the model we have defined and exposing this code to the presentation layer through interfaces. This has the advantage that the layers of the application become loosely coupled and the repository classes implementation can be replaced by another one as long as it implements the same interface definitions. And the presentation layer uh, of the application does not have to be impacted when a repository uh, layer is swapped out and replaced by another one. So let's have a look at how we would go ahead and implement the repository pattern in our application. To do this, the first thing we I'd like to, to draw your attention uh, to is the category details page, for example, or the product detail page. And if we look at the code behind um, for this page, you'll see that there's quite a little bit of code that is responsible for manipulating um, the model classes to either insert, update, or perform delete uh, operations on these classes or select operations. And some might argue that this code has no place being here because this file should only contain uh, code which is dealing with presentation layer aspects and control behavior behavior, while, uh, wh whereas the current, uh, in its current form, the application is also doing database access uh, and, and entity related code in this particular file. So to abstract this away and decouple this, this code from the, um, from the presentation layer, the first thing we want to do is we want to implement a couple of interfaces. And to do this, I'm going to come back to my BLL folder. And I'm going to add a new folder, and I'm going to call the new folder just repositories. Okay. And in the repositories folder, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add two existing um, interfaces, which we will have a look at. So these interfaces are called iProduct repository and iToy category repository. One being to one being meant to handle uh, products, and the other one being meant to handle toy categories. So let's have a look at these uh, implementations. And you, as you can see, they're very fairly simple and straightforward. All they do is that um, the iToy category repository implementation rep uh, implements an i list of toy category called get categories. So every class that is going to be inherited implementing this interface is going to have to implement a method called get categories, which will have to return uh, a type of i list toy category um, to its caller. The same goes true. The same holds true for the i product repository. This uh, all classes implementing this interface will have to implement a get products uh, method, which will return an i list of type of uh, containing products. Okay. So now the next thing we'd like to do is we I'm going to add two more classes that are actually going to be containing the um, in the implementation of these interfaces. So these are called product repository and toy category repository. So let's have a look at the toy category repository first. And as you can see, the first thing we do is we indicate that this class actually implements the iToy category repository interface. And as such, it will have to implement a method signature which will return an i list of toy category and will be called get categories. So in this uh, in this class implementation, we are going to uh, new up a product context class, um, and we are going to use that as the uh, uh, product uh, of uh, as the database uh, context. And all we do is we take the exact same code that we used to have in the code behind for the um, categories listings page, so return db toy categories, but since we're not returning an i queryable and we're returning an i list, we have to give the method more parameters by which the uh, calling data control can control the, uh, the link to SQL query that's going to be generated by Entity Framework. So 
to do this, we're going to take in a string sort by expression, a number of maximum rows to be returned, the start row which we're going to, from which we're going to start uh, reading the data, and the total row count, which is going to be an out uh, parameter. So we are going to be passing in a value, and th that value is going to be modified by the method. So all we do is we count the total number of rows and assign the value of the total number of rows to the total row count, which is going to be returned by this method through the out parameter. And then what we do is we give a, we uh, issue a call to DB toy categories. And then all we do is we do a uh, link under the covers and we say sort by and we sort by the sort expression. We skip to the starting row and we take the maximum number of rows that is indicated um, in the uh, parameters of the method and then all we do is we uh, call the toList method to convert the resulting iQueryable to a list and we store this in a variable called categories which we then return. The same happens for the product repository. So for the product repository, um, we have a get products uh, method, and the get products method takes in a bunch of parameters as well to allow the calling data control to actually control the uh, link uh, query that is going to be generated by NT framework. And these parameters are again the sort by expression to allow sorting on the grid views, the maximum number of rows that are going to be selected, the starting row from which we're going to start uh, selecting uh, when we're doing pagination, and of course we want we need to know the total row count. So again, we assign the total row count to the total row count variable, which is an out parameter. And then we uh, call the DB products uh, property of the product context object, which is going to return a DB set of products on which we say sort by the sort expression. We skip to the starting row. We take the rows, the, the maximum number of rows that is indicated in the parameters, and we convert this to a list, which we store in a variable called products, which we then return. So the next step after having implemented these two um, classes is to add a new folder. So let's uh, add a new folder called control extenders. And I'm going to bring in one more class, add existing item, called control extensions. So this class is just going to be defining a couple of extender methods um, for data controls. And the one I'd like to uh, particularly highlight is this particular method, the set um, data method objects. Um, and this method, what it is going to do is it's going to get a hold of the data control that we're going to be calling the method on and it's going to overload its calling data methods uh, um, and it's going to uh, just set the uh, uh, the e dot data method object of this uh, method to the data method object parameter that is passed in and that will allow us to automatically link the uh, data control to the repository uh, methods that we have defined in the repository classes. I've also created two helper methods, one which is called set default sort and one which uh, uh, two overloads of the same method uh, called set default sort. And these are going to be uh, uh, be to, to be available on grid view controls, and they're going to allow me to sort the grid view um, using a sort expression and possibly even a sort direction. So if I don't give it a sort direction, I'm just going to sort ascending. But if I should give it a sort direction, it is also going to uh, sort by that sort direction. So now we have all the code we need to implement the repository pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a new web form. So I'm going to add a new item in here, uh, web form using master page. And I'm going to call this, um, um, this new web form categories categories rep repository and I'm going to add it select the site master master page and I'm just going to copy the code which is in the uh, third content panel from my categories page I'm going to copy all of this markup directly into my new page because I'm going to be keeping the same grid view and I'm the grid view is still going to be calling the same methods 
okay but this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to be hooking these methods up to uh, the repository so to do this what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in the rep uh, category repository <laughs> category rep aspx.cs in the code behind um, and first of all um, base libraries and let's add some namespaces in here so I would like to bring in the web sample dot uh, bll dot extensions which control uh, uh, contains my control extender methods and my web sample dot bll dot repositories which contains my repository classes okay so now instead of uh, as I was doing here newing up a product context object what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a snippet from here um, oops and I'm just going to new up a new repository of type I toy category so let's go back into the code behind and let's new up a new repository of type I toy category which is going to be of type toy category repository and then what we need to do in the page load is we're going to be calling the extender methods so I'm going to be calling toy categories which is the name of my grid view dot and since this is an extender method what I can do is just use Visual Studio's IntelliSense and start typing and I can actually see that it actually uh, is smart enough to pick out the extender method which matches the signature because it takes in a uh, control of type data bound control which the grid view inherits from, from data bound control so therefore we can just use the set data method object and pass in the repository we've just created so if we go to the definition of this we see that what it does is the data method object is actually the repository and I'm going to be uh, using the data method object of the data bound control and assigning it the, uh, rev the, the object which is contained in this variable here. Now I would also like to sort the grid view um, the first time I come onto the page so if the page is not post back please go ahead and call one of the overloads for that I've defined in the I toy category uh, repos in, in the control extenders uh, class and this is going to actually sort the grid view by the name uh, column I'm going to do the same thing for the products uh, listings so I'm going to create a new item a web form using master page and this web form is going to be called products repository so let's add that in choose the master page okay and now I'm just going to be copying the uh, markup from the products listings page into the uh, products repository page so let's copy that in and products listings via repository repository let's just change that so we know we're on the good page and I'm actually also going to uh, modify it here so that I'm on the good page I know I'm on the good page so let's just add that in via repository there we go and now um, as I did on the categories repository page so I'm just going to uh, bring in the same namespaces so let's just add it imports and say using web sample dot bll dot extensions which are the uh, control extender methods that I've just defined and using web sample dot bll dot repository um, so you see that now I have drastically limited the number of namespaces that I'm bringing in compared to the same page over here where I had to bring in all of my model classes now I'm extracting the model away from the presentation layer and as before I'm instead of um, creating a page level variable of type product context what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a page level variable of type I product repository and in the page load I am going to again hook up the uh, grid view 
to, via the set data method object and uh, pass in the repository object that I've just created. And then I am also going to sort the grid view uh, by an, via name. And the final touch to this to get everything to work is that I'm going to come back into my global ASAX and I'm going to modify my routes. So here, instead of pointing to categories ASPX, I'm going to be pointing to categories rep.aspx and to products rep.aspx. So everything is going to continue working fine. I've just changed uh, my solution to point to the new product repository listing and the category repository listing. So I should be able to rebuild the solution. Let's go ahead and do a quick build. Build succeeded. So let's run this in Internet Explorer once again. So I'm already logged in and now if I go to the categories page what you see is that I, I am calling the category listings but via the repository this time and you see that the uh, grid view is already sorted by name ascending and now I can go proceed to sort it via short description ascending or short description descending, uh, do pagination, and it is the grid view now that is going to be controlling my repository. So if I set a breakpoint on my repository here, let's just do that really quickly in the um, toy category repository class. Let's just set a breakpoint on the get categories method. And when I set the breakpoint, let's just go to page one. And you can see that the sort expression now is that I am going to be sorting by the short description and I'm sorting in descending order. The maximum number of rows that I want to take is five and the start row index is zero. And I am giving it a total row count variable, which is going to be populated by this method as an out parameter. So the total row count is six. And then I'm going to be proceeding to build my select statement using link under the covers and then returning a, a, a result of I list of toy category. And there we go. This is how you would implement the repository pattern to start selecting data. In the next video on this tutorial, we will uh, extend the repository pattern to also allow the uh, update, insert, and delete scenarios for the uh, products list, uh, for the product details, and for the category details uh, pages that are in our application.